Okay, so Brian, John, um, Tim, when we uh, I touched on just when we go and look at your your fields, we've essentially loaded all the um, fields up into the portal. From them, we can once we've done our uh, analysis on them, I'm processing that um, correlation quadrant. Especially, we get sort of just that simple metric, like I touched on, just around that high yield, high protein, that low yield, low pro, uh, low yield. Um, high protein, low yield, low protein, and, and high yield, um, low protein. So it's just trying to get those that cross section around those different um, zones all laid out and, and in a format that's easy to understand and, and easy to then action. So when we come through, we'll just do a simple snapshot summary around what the, the fields are, are doing and how they have performed. And here, for example, is sort of looking at a, just a snapshot of the, the wheat paddocks from here, we can just go through and say, right, what are we moving at as far as the, the protein levels? And when we start analysing this data, we're really looking for that protein sweet spot to be around the, the 10 and a half to 11 and a half. Um, do you have a, a set um, protein number that you guys are hard and fast on chasing at all, Tim or or Brian? Or? No, I, I normally probably go for, hang on, I'll turn the camera back. I'm probably more chasing that 10 and a half to 11, I suppose. So um, yep. make sure you're in that APW. Um, I think if, if oh, I've always thought if you're in ASW, you've, you've lost yield. If you're um, in your APW category, you're probably you know, in that sweet spot um, for yield and nitrogen use. Um, if you're delivering a lot of H2, you've um, maybe have applied too much N or... Um, yeah, the season's cut off or, or one thing. But, yeah, if you're consistently growing, I tell a lot of my clients, if you're consistently growing ASW, you're um, not using enough nitrogen as a fairly sure. rough rule of thumb. Yep, no, I think that's a fair enough point. And I, I guess, yeah, looking then back through your, your protein um, levels, a lot of them are sort of sitting just under that um, – Ten and a half mark. We've got some that are close, um, some that are sort of yeah, really there. And then, but then when we link that back to then the yield variation, we're getting a lot of spread in that in that yield factor, so ranging from that one point eight up to five and a half sort of field averages. Or sorry, probably I think that's a scrap that one. Two point six up to the five and a half. Um, uh, yeah, as far as that spread goes. So really understand why that variation is coming there and where some of the opportunities are. So. Just touching on when we are falling, I, I agree, when we are below that 10.5 mark, there is some yield opportunity with this. So, again, we're chasing, using protein as that indicator to where the, the, the yield optimization or there is some yield gap that we can be closing in on with just simple end management. So, when we go through, we then sort of break that down into um, uh, what, what, what that spread is as far as, a, a, I guess, that histogram or that graphing. Uh, goes just a simple representation of it, and um, yeah, we can see here we've got a, a strong peak in the in the yellow zone, and then uh, another peak in in the blue zone. So um, we really want to have as much as we can leaning towards this this green zone. So hitting that sweet spot, so above that ten and a half percent protein, and having that um, yeah, so that's linked back to that field average yield. So having that yield um, up, and then. Um, when we've got that yellow zone, we've got a N um, essentially falling short of N and we've got the blue zone, which has had excess of N. So as that starting point, we can see that you've got 25% of the paddock in that, in that blue zone where really it didn't get its full utilisation of the applied N. It sort of ended up parking a lot of that N into protein, not into, into extra yield. And this area in the yellow, 35% of those, that area in the fields has um, had capacity to potentially have had some tonnage of yield left in the in the bank, um, if we could have just got some extra end on or got the timing um, a bit more refined or on some of those that end strategy, the red zone, as we discussed, could be uh, linked in with the yellow zone or the blue zone. Can be a combination of the two. So is it moisture or um, or is it just an, an further nitrogen limited for for the whole season across those sorts of zones? That's where we just sort of start exploring those areas further. Then going down to the barley, a bit more of an even spread across the four zones um, here. But again, that yellow zone, 
um, and, and blue zone are essentially where we look for the, the, the opportunities to really slide that yellow zone towards the green zone where you can see that by just playing around with that the blue zones is, a, I guess, a simple strategy to start with. So if we've got 20% of that um, blue zone essentially end to play with, let's get some of that across to those yellow zones and bring – then that slides that green zone up 20%. And then we're up to like 50% of our, our barley fields have been essentially maximising um, that nitrogen management. So that's how we're sort of just sum summarising the data and getting that snapshot and, and sort of looking at where the opportunities are around that that carryover.